Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority regular board meeting, January 28th, 2022. The, um, the board did meet in executive session, no discussion about any resolutions or any votes taken of any of the discussion. Um, so let's have a uh, roll call, Deb. Okay. Ms. McCormick Barron. Here. Ms. Cristello. Here. Mr. Domock. Here. Ms. Lever. Here. Dr. Morell. Here. Mr. Shuley. Here. Ms. Strasberger. Here. Mr. Thomas. Here. Mr. Turner. Present. All board members are present. All right, great. Do we have any uh, speakers for public comment? We have no registered speakers for public comment today. All right. Well, uh, today is a busy day, obviously, and um, you know, PWSA with a large infrastructure inventory. Um, you know, today is another reminder of how important our infrastructure is. Certainly, with the president's visit and our bridge collapse, thank God no one was hurt, but um, just points out again how important our infrastructure is to our everyday daily life. And um, hopefully we'll get uh, some attention, not only on the um, infrastructure that's in place, but the infrastructure that needs to be replaced. But uh, I'm, I'm thankful that, that uh, there aren't any serious injuries with this bridge collapse. So let's start with the approval of the minutes of December 17th, 2021. May I have a motion? Motion to approve, Jim Turner. Is there a second? Second, BJ Leber. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor of approving the minutes of December 17th, 2021, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, the minutes are approved. Let's move to reports and updates. Finance Department, Mr. Barca. Good morning, Chair, and good morning, members of the PWSA Board. Included in your board packet is the finance report through December 31st, 2021. Uh, the finance report shows PWSA is on uh, unaudited cash basis year end results. Uh, PWSA performed very well in 2021 with year-over-year -year revenues increasing approximately $27 million, uh, a, year, a projected year-end surplus of $6.8 million, and a cash balance at its highest level in at least the last decade. Uh, in addition, PwC's year-end financial audit is well underway. I expect the audit to be completed in March or April of this year, uh, at which time the final results will be shared with the board and the public as well. It will be on our website. Uh, PwC's capital program continued to progress in 2021 with capital spending exceeding $100 million for the second consecutive year. Uh, I would like to point out that PwC received a combined total of $124.6 million in local, state, and federal infrastructure funding in 2021. Uh, that, amount is, that amount of funding is the largest that PwC has ever received in a single year, and it will save our ratepayers approximately $118.4 million. Um, so it is a very substantial amount and it builds off the point you made chair on the, the infrastructure funding and how sorely and badly it is needed. Uh, it is at this time, I'll turn it back over to the board and answer any questions they may have. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Barca? Yes, this is Jim. Um, one comment and then uh, one question. Uh, the comment is, uh, Ed, as you know, a big chunk of the federal and state money are loans rather than grants. Now they still save us money and, and that's good. Um, the uh, question is the uh, two departments that have large overruns in the uh, uh, spending for the year are actually saving us money. Would you explain how that is? Sure. Uh, what Jim's referring to is in the financial report, you'll see that our MIS and finance department uh, exceeded our uh, departmental budget amount for the year, but as a total, the operating total, we're still within our budgeted uh, approval level. Uh, specifically with those two departments in MIS, there's the ERP implementation that's ongoing. Uh, and then in finance, uh, there's vehicle purchases that we had planned for 2021. 
both of those purchases were planned to be funded with a short-term note, uh, thereby just you know paying that back with interest uh, over a short short term of short period of time. Excuse me. Uh, but what we've seen this year, or I guess for 2021, is we have an unexpectedly large surplus. Uh, that's a big factor of our revenues increasing a little bit higher than we expected. So what we've done is we've paid off in full with current year funds, uh, those vehicle purchases and the ERP implementation costs, uh, thereby saving us interest costs and debt service costs in the future. So uh, it is a planned increase, if you will. Uh, but it does save our ratepayers and the PwSA money, and it's still, uh, you know, is within our budgeted allowance for 2021. Thank you, Ed. Sure. Thanks, Jim. Any other questions or comments for Mr. Barca? Okay, we'll move to the engineering department. Good morning, Barry. Good morning, Chair Shuley and members of our board. I would like to update you today on the ongoing progress that is being made with respect to our uh, water reliability plan projects. Uh, on January 13th, a full complement of stakeholders from the departments of engineering, operations, compliance, and administration conducted the first of three days of our water reliability plan risk assessment workshops. I'll refer to it as WRP from now on, um, with presentations on the near-term projects that are entering construction at this time, which includes Highland Reservoir, uh, number two liner and cover replacement, the Rising Mains three and four improvements project, and the Highland Reservoir pump station and Rising Main supply and Rising Mains project. Um, it was a valuable exchange of updating all the parties on the scope, schedules, permitting status, and an in-depth forum an open one um, on the risk mitigation measures, the responsibilities, and all of our outage plans and standard operating procedures that are currently being developed to ensure these projects move forward in a safe and sound manner. Uh, the final two days of the workshop will be completed on February 17th and 18th, um, and they'll address the balance of the projects in the WRP. And next, uh, on January 14th, uh, PWSA uh, received the public water supply permits for construction of Rising Main 4 improvements project. So that's another one uh, in the positive column. Um, currently, the DEP is a process, in the process of reviewing six remaining active public water supply permit applications for construction, um, including the Asphalt Pump Station to Land for Rising Main project, the Asphalt Pump Station, uh, the Brecken Pump Station improvements projects and the Clearwell Emergency Response Projects, the Highland Reservoir Pump Station, and the Highland Reservoir Supply and Rising Main Project. Of these six open permit applications with the state, we've received no new technical deficiency letters since the uh, December board meeting, and we successfully responded to the last remaining TDL for the Highland Reservoir Supply and Rising Main Project on January 24th, so we're awaiting response for that. Um, we will continue to keep the board updated on the uh, permit status in future meetings with respect to uh, water reliability plan projects uh, that have entered construction phase. Note that uh, preliminary construction efforts in support of Rising Main 3 are wrapping up with the disinfection of the new large valve on Rising Main 4 that had successfully been, um, had been installed. Uh, with the completion of this work, our contractor has begun mobilization of their equipment and crews uh, to begin the rehabilitation of Rising Main 3 in Highland Park. And then the uh, material manufacturer and fabrication of the Highland uh, Number 2 Reservoir Liner and Cover is ongoing. On a coordination call last week, the manufacturer positively reported uh, to us that they have completed all liner and baffle manufacturing with the majority of the material having been shipped to our contractor, Layfield. And uh, they are on time and uh, on track for having the liner uh, completed um, well within the schedule. They have completed over 50% of it to date and will ship the remaining uh, materials to our contractor on time. So we are on schedule. Um, now we'll turn it back it over to the board for any questions or comments you may have. Questions or comments for Mr. King? Mike, you're on mute. Thank you, Alex. There we go. Yeah, just, uh, I got a two-parter. Uh, thanks for the 
the update, Barry. Uh, I noticed in the MFP effluent, there's a ripple going through seven to day, 10 days peak to peak. So I'm wondering if that's related to the back flushing schedule and or the recent DEP recommendations. Uh, part two is I appreciate, I'd be curious about the DEP recommendations. So I was wondering if those could be sent. Okay, I will need to make sure that I uh, confirm with regards to that uh, ripple that you did notice in the board packet. And um, I will definitely be following up with our staff to confirm a positive answer on that. I had assumptions. Um, and then, uh, forgive me, your second question was with regards to? Oh, I'll just, if, if I could get sort of a summary of those offline, sent by email or oh, something. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, just curious what they're sniffing around. <clears throat> Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for Barry? Barry, thank you for giving the update on the water reliability workshop. I was going to try to give the, the board an update at the executive session. We ran out of time, so thank you for that. And, and as you pointed out, we still have two more days, but uh, I was very pleased with the work that we had on day one um, that had the presentations by staff and we had uh, quite a bit of participation, engagement, a lot of questions. Um, I think we all felt better about the, the feedback and, and hopefully these projects will get better. But as we've seen by today's events, you know, there's no, there's no telling what can happen to our infrastructure at any one time. So thank you again for that update. Thank you. Let's move to the Chief Executive Officer's report. Will? Good morning, Chair Shuley, members of the board and members of the public. Uh, I, I do want to echo Chair Shuley's remarks about the, the bridge collapse this morning. Obviously brings back a lot of memories of the, uh, the sinkhole experience that we had. And I think in both instances, as far as I know right now, uh, we were able to to dodge a, a very serious risk. And when we talk about infrastructure and the need for investment, I think events like this are unfortunate. And, and with the sinkhole has been sort of turned into a meme, something that is funny, uh, but these really are uh, you know, life or death decisions we make on a daily basis about where to invest our infrastructure. So uh, a very important reminder hitting home, uh, we're standing by working with the city to make sure that if we do have any assets that are impacted that we're coordinating with them. At this point, it seems like our infrastructure is not uh, immediately impacted from this morning, but we'll, we will track that and keep the board and the public informed. Uh, shifting gears, as we've all uh, experienced in our daily lives, we've hit a very intense cold snap, and I always want to remind uh, our stakeholders that our folks are repairing water main breaks in wet, cold conditions on a 24-7 basis. And we have had quite a few over the past few weeks, as you might imagine. And as things warm up, often we see in that freeze thaw condition that uh, breaks even increase. So want them all to know that we appreciate their service. They have been continuing to work throughout COVID and there is no uh, pretty close to no sort of weather event that keeps them from serving our customers and making sure that they stay in water. So wanna uh, tip my hat to them as I always like to. Uh, in terms of performance metrics, uh, each month I, I try to highlight a relevant metric. Um, it's tough to determine which ones to flag, but this month in the performance report, I will highlight that we came ever so close to meeting our tiger, target actual meter read rate of 98%. You will see over the past month, we were at 97.77%. So we are very close and that's attributable to the fact that from 2019 to 2021, we have upgraded over 22,600 water meters. And uh, this is not only a PUC compliance item, uh, it's also just critical to making sure that our customers get a monthly accurate bill. Uh, and so uh, that's a, a hats off to our customer service team, our meter team based out of Howard Street and the plumbers who are going into homes. And we want to thank our customers for scheduling those appointments with us and allowing them to upgrade that meter infrastructure that's often in their basement. Uh, and we've been, again, been able to manage to do that through the, the pandemic over the last year and a half plus. I also want to thank those who have uh, contributed or shared our fundraising pledge. Uh, we are members of the Dollar Energy Fund's 
cool down for warmth event that is going on this week. We have a goal of raising $2,500 uh, this week for our hardship assistance program. This is for customers who are experiencing a one-time event that's preventing them from keeping up on their water and sewer bills. All of our PWSA customers, whether you're water, sewer, or combined, are now eligible for this program. Uh, I will say our own employees over the last two years have raised over $8,500 for this fund, uh, and we are reaching out to other stakeholders who are interested in contributing a tax-deductible gift to do so. There's information on our website, uh, and uh, we appreciate we're, we're about $2,000 short of our goal. We're, we're in our last day, and I, oftentimes, uh, I know I put off things until the last minute. Hopefully, there are some who are putting uh, off that contribution and, and hope that they do so. Finally, uh, the, the highlight of my remarks this week are acknowledging our employees who are going over and beyond and are being recognized for the PGH2O Excellence Awards. I'm going to begin uh, with two nominations that were presented by our senior manager at the warehouse in the Strip District, Bill Bennett. Uh, first, he has nominated John Wagner. John is a meter repair specialist at the warehouse, and he has successfully tested over 15,000 meters in the last 18 months. Uh, and John has been testing our meters for the last eight years. And to put his uh, increased performance in, in a point of reference, uh, with our old technology prior to 2018, John was testing around 30 meters per week. And when we installed our new state-of-the-art, what we call a test bench, which helps us determine whether or not the meters are appropriately calibrated, uh, John's been able to keep up with the demand of about 1,000 meters per week. Uh, I've been able to see the, the process live in action. He is a well-oiled machine, and we really appreciate John's dedication uh, to the, the meter program at his uh, location at the warehouse. So congratulations, John, on receiving a PGH2O Excellence Award this month. Second up at the warehouse is Ryan Sullivan. Ryan is an inventory control specialist, too. He has been with the authority for just over a year and has proven himself as a valuable jack of all trades. And one of the, the traits about Ryan that our managers really appreciate is that he is proactively seeking improvement projects. So he is not sitting around waiting to be told what to do. Uh, he is constantly staying busy and doing everything he can to contribute. The team at the warehouse really see him as an asset and we're all very excited to watch Ryan grow at PWSA. So congratulations to Ryan Sullivan as well. Next, we're gonna shift to the, the water treatment plant. Uh, as everyone on this call rightly knows, the water treatment plant is truly uh, the lifeblood of our ability to produce not just water at all, but safe and high quality water. And today we are honoring uh, Gregory Cummins, who is a plant operator. Greg has recently become, been covering multiple operator shifts due to unfortunately quarantines and illness due to the pandemic call offs. And uh, we have had in the past a difficult time keeping all of the operator positions filled. And these operators work 24 seven shifts and obviously they are essential. Uh, the, what we love about Greg is he's never t hesitated to jump in and cover shifts as needed, sometimes working the maximal, maximum amount that is allowed per week. So uh, in addition to, to chipping in when he can, he still brings a great sense of humor to the team at the treatment plant and a, a positive attitude and kindness. So we're really grateful for Gregory's work, as well as all of the operators at the treatment plant that have been working in extraordinary conditions now for approaching two years. And, and we cannot say enough about them collectively, but I'm really happy to recognize Gregory Cummins, our operator at the plant this morning. Shifting gears over to Howard Street, which is where our uh, sewer and plumbing operation is based out of in the north side. We have uh, four recognitions that have been nominated by the senior manager, Mike Dush, out of Howard Street. First is William Wagner. He is a TV truck specialist. Up second is Brian Rumsky. He's a utility worker one. We also have Benjamin Crankshaw. He is a utility worker one. And Robert Hamilton, who is also a utility worker one. And these, this particular team, uh, they assisted a resident and her daughter who dropped her cell phone in a catch basin. And, and believe it or not, we run into these kind of situations with all sorts of things falling into the catch basin. And this particular customer was very appreciative of everything that the team did to get the cell phone. And she even said that her rough day was turned into a wonderful one because of the dedicated work from this crew. And, and she put forward to Mike that they be commended. So these, these four, 
gentlemen always go above and beyond and they take on any challenge. And so we want to recognize them and I wish them a congratulations on getting the PGH2O excellence recognition this morning. Shifting over to customer service. Uh, Maria Mahalik is our dispatch coordinator. That's a, a management level responsibility in our dispatch group. She was nominated by our director of customer service, Julie Quigley. Since Maria's promotion to dispatch coordinator in May of 21, she has led the team to raise their call handling evaluation scores as high as 4.43 out of five, which is terrific if you consider the, the people calling dispatch are typically experiencing an emergency and, and likely not in a very good mood. Uh, and through the development of a call sequencing model that helps triage the nature of the calls into dispatch, she set a, regular, a rigorous schedule for herself, uh, has trained the staff and is monitoring them on an ongoing basis. And not only that, she has incredible organizational skills and is helping dispatch pitch in with overall contact center responsibilities when their workload per permits it to happen. So we're very excited about Maria's continued advancement through the authority, and I am very happy to give her the PGH2O Excellence Award this month as well. Shifting over to engineering and construction, uh, two nominees from our, uh, uh, our Director of Engineering and Construction, Barry King. First up is Anthony Galina. He's an Associate Project Manager within our Drinking Water Program. Uh, he's being recognized this month for his necessary and timely work on the water reliability plan scheduling. We were talking about the workshops that have been taking place on those projects, and Anthony has played a key role there, as well as identifying conflicts and coordination with those very projects, which is going to be critical to our success, and we appreciate Anthony's work there. He's really our go-to engineer when it comes to engineering evaluations and calcs. Uh, he has done a great job managing these projects, and he's become the point of contact at PWSA for that master schedule of the water reliability plan projects that we are all tracking very closely here internally. Second up out of the engineering and construction department is uh, Brent Leahy. He is our associate project manager also within the drinking water program, and he's being recognized today for his work on the small diameter water main replacement program. Brent's been the overall, uh, you know, the project manager responsible for the design phase of these ongoing projects. And over the years, he's been the driver of moving the selection strategy for determining where we make these investments from an Excel work based, a, a workbook based system to a GIS interactive tool, which is obviously a, a lot more effective and useful for us to use going forward. And we're grateful for Brent taking on uh, that role. He has become one of our managers that holds our master specifications, which is very important for consistency. And he is managing all of the changes to that master spec uh, list. So congratulations to both Brent and Anthony from Engineering Construction on being recognized this month for the PGH2O Excellence Awards. And finally, last but not least, we want to recognize Megan Hicks, who is a GIS analyst within our MIS department. And she was nominated this month for her continual support of engineering and her innovations in data management for stormwater problem areas. I will add, Megan was an integral part in the rollout of the stormwater fee uh, system that is GIS based and worked extremely well with the team for all of the support required that's going to allow us to, to implement this program as we're doing right now. It's a major moment for us as a new stormwater utility and we're really grateful for Megan's contributions there. So congratulations, Megan. Congratulations, everyone this month. Uh, I cannot say how much I appreciate all of the collaborative work on our team. And with that, I will turn it back over to you, Chair Shuley. Thanks, Will. Congratulations to all of our award winners, our Excellence Award winners. And uh, as most of you know, this has been a significant week of uh, retirement announcements. We've had uh, Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer, Ben Roethlisberger, and we also have our own Rick Obermeyer. Those of you that uh, uh, have been associated with the authority know that Rick has had a tremendous contribution to the authority. His, his time in the authority goes back 40 years, back to 1982, even before me, for God's sakes, because I didn't come to the city till 1984. And I met Rick shortly after that and uh, got to know him personally and his family. His, uh, his son and my son uh, went to school together and, and we've been friends for a long, long time. Rick is a tireless worker. He is uh, an example 
of uh, a work ethic that I'm afraid sometimes we don't see every day. Uh, he is starts his day often five o'clock in the morning. When I say starts his day, he's sitting at his desk at five o'clock in the morning and he is taking calls and scheduling work. And he started as a plumber and worked his way up to the chief of operations. And he's been, I don't ever remember a, a day of work that, that Rick has, has missed. And he's become an expert in our system, somebody that we rely on constantly for his institutional knowledge. And, uh, and he's always willing to share that information. You know, sometimes this information isn't on recorded maps or drawings, and it's earned him the nickname of Obi-Wan after the all-knowing Star Wars character. So Rick has experienced many changes at, at PWSA, and I know that he feels that, that where we are now and, and over the last several years, we've made some very impactful improvements and he's very proud to have been part of this team and, uh, and, 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 made, and was a, a huge contributor. I know Rick's on the line and uh, I, I, I wanna say thank you on behalf of the board, on behalf of the ratepayers, on behalf of everyone for your contributions to the authority. Thank you very much. And I'll leave it to uh, other board members who know Rick or will to chime in if you'd like. Yeah, this is Jim. I, I just want to say we're going to miss you, Rick. Uh, you are one of the few that predate both Alex and even my involvement, <laughs> which goes back to 1983 at the city. But you beat us all, and uh, we're going to miss you. But it's uh, you deserve your retirement. Enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Alex. And I'll just say that um... You know, one of my favorite parts of working for a city is I get to meet the people who make our city run. And I think of PWSA is the same. You know, there are people, there are workers who work every day of their lives to keep our city running that don't, no one knows about. And they're just the sort of uns, unsung heroes of our, of our, um, you know, of this authority and of um, our municipality as a whole. And so, um, whenever I needed Rick to meet me when I was chief of staff, my predecessor to meet me on site or as a council person myself um, to meet me on site anywhere, he was always able to make it. And that's probably because he started his day at 5 a.m. I didn't realize that. So he was always able to make it himself on the site to check out the leak, to be there to meet with a neighbor. Um, just unbelievably hardworking and diligent and just a pleasure to work with. So Rick, we're going to miss you and um, big shoes to fill. Thank you so much for all your work. Thank you. And I'll just, you know, everyone has said it, but just on a, a personal note, especially coming into the organization, working on public affairs, which for a time was very dicey at moments. Rick was always there with the ice water running through his veins, able to guide us to an appropriate response, uh, responding to the land for rising main break and repair. Rick was there when we were looking at that sinkhole I was talking about earlier uh, with a bus in it, you know, Rick was there helping us guide through all of the different things that we needed to consider. Um, and that was just in a short period of time that he and I worked together and I relied really heavily on his knowledge and more importantly, his sense of humor, just a really great colleague. And Erica, like you said, it, it will be impossible to replace someone like Rick. So uh, Rick, thank you and I hope you, do enjoy your retirement and that we don't pester you too much in that retirement to try to get those nuggets of institutional knowledge only you have. Thank you, Will. I really appreciate it. And call anytime. One of the one of the tragedies of COVID is that we have to do this virtually. Too bad we couldn't all be here together to to uh, shake Rick's hand. Um, one of the other things I'm going to miss is that. Rick always had the best candy collection in his office. And, um, you know, that was a, you know, not only important for me to go in and talk to Rick about what was going on about infrastructure, but it gave me a chance to eat some of his candy. And I'm going to miss that part of it as well. But Rick, we're going to miss you. You you have our number. We're going to, as Will said, try not to call you and, and bother you, but enjoy your retirement. You've earned it. And congratulations to you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. All right, let's move to the resolutions. Resolution number one, 
Mr. Barca. Resolution number one, approval of an award to MS Consultants Inc. for consulting engineering services in an amount not to exceed $271,909.10. May I have a motion? Motion to approve, Jim Turner. Second, Audrey Morrell. Thank you. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor of resolution number one, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? I am going to abstain from this resolution because as I have mentioned before, I have um, participated on MS's advisory board, uh, work related, unrelated to the PWSA. So I am going to abstain from today's vote, but I believe we have enough votes to approve resolution number one. Resolution number two, Ms. Quigley. Good morning, Chair and members of the board. Resolution number two is a request for approval of the second extension of the Eckerd Siemens Sharin and Malott Agreement to continue active support of the Pennsylvania Public Utility Commission and other litigation matters. Eckerd Siemens has provided the authority with high quality legal services and staff recommends approval of this extension. May I have a motion? Motion, motion to, to approve, approve. Jim Turner. Second, Hank McCormick. Thank you. Discussion. Uh, Julie, this is Jim, um, uh, and I'm comfortable with the extension with Eckerd Siemens, but at what point in time do you expect to go out for an RFP? We'll have to weigh that very carefully, Jim. The authority is still in the years long process of coming under regulation that started back in April of 2018. Um, compliance plan stage two is underway now and that touches on customer service issues and stormwater. Eckerd Siemens has successfully navigated us through three rate case settlements and numerous other important matters with the commission and day to day they handle our formal complaint matters. Um, so, but as you know, we're working to fill the chief counsel role, so they will be looking at best practices to analyze our options. Thank you, Julie. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments for Ms. Quigley? All those in favor of resolution number two, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Are, there any, are there any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, resolution number two is approved. Resolution number three, Mr. B. Resolution, James Patton. Resolution number three, approving the renewal of a five-year license and maintenance agreement for the meter test bench to Morris Company out of the operating budget for $323,590. Project number 2021-OPS-000-0. <clears throat> this renewal is for Mars Company to provide maintenance of the equipment, software, and service, along with yearly calibration of the meter test bench. This test bench is used to test two inch and smaller meters. Okay, thanks BJ. May I have a motion? So moved BJ. Um, is there a second? Second, Mark Thomas. Thank you, Mark. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor of resolution number three, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Resolution number three is approved. Resolution number four, BJ. Resolution number four, approval is requested for the third option year of an operating contract for security officer services to St. Moritz Security Services Incorporated in the amount of $939,416.80. This is carried as an operating expense in the water treatment plant's 2022-2023 budget. It is necessary to have guards patrol the site to fulfill the DEP permit requirements to have 24-7 coverage. Thank you. May I have a motion? Motion to approve, Jim Turner. Q, is there a second? Second, Erica Strasberger. Thank you. Any discussion? 
Uh, yes, BJ, this is Jim. Uh, is this something that at some point in the future we might consider doing in-house? Yes, Jim, this is something that PWSA has been exploring to uh, hire a security manager and eventually try and bring this in-house to have our own uh, in-house security team, yes. Thank you. I was gonna this ask. Is, uh, sorry, I just have a, a quick question, um, clarifying question. Under the supplier diversity program status, what does the Homeland INT and security mean? I will have to get back to you. I believe that is actually the, it may be the, the um, I, I'll have to get back to you with an answer for that one. I'm not sure. Okay, thanks. I was gonna ask the same question that Jim asked BJ, but uh, I also think that it's really important that, you know, given uh, recent announcements about um, domestic terrorists trying to um, look at our infrastructure. You know, we're we're so so vulnerable. A lot of our infrastructure is is, is in wide open, and and you know, it's not um, uh, necessarily that easy to protect uh, because we have so much. So this is a very important contract, and I hope that that we move to having some of our internal staff to uh, help us with this function. All those in favor of resolution number four, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Any abstentions? I'll abstain, resolution. Alex. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Resolution number four is approved. Let's move to resolution number five. Resolution number five is a request for the board's approval to award a capital contract for construction of our 2021 small diameter water main replacement contract B to A Felino Construction Incorporated in the amount of $17,498,894.17. Note this project involves a relay of water mains, which includes valves, fire hydrants, and service lines as required. Um, and the uh, addressing the relay of four inch to 12 inch water mains in the central Oakland, uh, Lawrenceville and Highland Park neighborhoods of the city of Pittsburgh. Staff recommends the board approve this award. Thank you, Barry. May I have a motion? Motion to approve, Peg McCormick Barron. Thank you, Peg. Is there a second? Second, DJ Lever. Thank you. Any discussion? Yes, uh, Barry, this is Jim. Uh, for both resolution five and six, these were rebid situations and Felino was the winning bidder. Uh, who, who was the winning bidder the first time and then did their bids go up or down the second time? Thank you. So interestingly enough for both contracts, uh, B and C, both of them uh, were originally a Felino um back in april and they are also again uh felino and so they're uh for both projects the value went up over that period of time um so it was an 11.3 percent increase for contract uh, b and a 7.7 percent increase for contract c thank you any other questions or comments for barry all those in favor of resolution number five, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Resolution number five is approved. Resolution number six, Barry. Resolution number six is a request for the board's approval to award a capital contract for the construction of the 2021 small diameter water main replacement contract C to A Polino construction in the amount of nine million six hundred ninety thousand sixty nine dollars and sixty nine cents uh, this project will uh, involve the relay of water mains uh, in the hazelwood shady side squirrel hill and point breeze neighborhoods of the city of pittsburgh staff recommends that the board uh, approve this award thank you may i have a motion motion, motion to, to approve, approve erica Strasburger. 
So. Okay. Second. Second. I don't know if who who was considered right. the. Nominee. So a pretty, it was a pretty close tie, but but we know Eric and Mark were were involved in that. Mm -hmm. um, any discussion? All right. All those in favor of resolution number six, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, resolution number six is approved. Resolution number seven. Resolution number seven is a request for the board's approval to award a capital contract for construction of the 2022 neighborhood LSLR lead service line replacement um, to independent enterprises incorporated in the amount of $11,616,308, as well as a professional services agreement for construction management and construction inspection services to AECOM Technical Services Incorporated in the amount of $1,729,273.45. This program involves um, conducting a lead service line replacement program around the city of Pittsburgh, where we will be utilizing the grant funding from the city of Pittsburgh under the American Recovery Plan. Uh, this project is another example of our effort to remove all lead service lines within the service area. And this one in specific will allow us um, to do service line material verification as well as lead service line replacement at approximately 14, 1,400 uh, locations throughout the city of Pittsburgh. Staff recommends that the board approve these awards. Thank you. May I have a motion? Motion to approve, Jim Turner. Is there a second? Second, Peg McCormick Barrett. Thank you, Peg. Any discussion? Yes, uh, Barry, this is Jim. Um, I know we have a very thorough process that we use to select the neighborhoods that we're going to work in. I wonder if you could very quickly explain that for the public's benefit. Absolutely. So PWSA had previously, as part of our lead service line replacement program, uh, developed a LSLR prioritization model, uh, which we use to determine our neighborhood LSLR um, instances where we're going to replace. Um, the model considers basically four criteria uh, that we use in determining the priority level of each neighborhood, and uh, those uh, criteria include the number of children that are under six years old and women of childbearing age, uh, which is data that we receive and obtain from the U.S. Census. Uh, this criteria is about 40% of the weighted um, uh, assumption. The, the blood lead levels of children in the neighborhood is the second uh, factor that we determine, and that's determined through the ACHD, um, and that's about 40% of the uh, scoring or ranking. And then neighborhood income level uh, as obtained by uh, the US Census, which is weighted at 10%, and the number of residential lead in unknown service lines in the neighborhood which we obtained from our own PWSA inventory records, uh, which we weight at about 10% of the model. So that all those factors uh, encompassed is how we make the basis and uh, score and rank them. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for Mr. King on this resolution? Yeah, just a question of clarification for my own knowledge. Is the, is the uh, contract in the PSA bundle because of the grant or is that you know, project specific or some other reason why those are bundled in the same action? Um, I can speak to the fact that historically, um, when they were related to avoid um, doubling the number of resolutions, we had historically taken them on together. I don't know if someone else uh, within administration would have liked to provide any other clarity. Just, just to clarify, they are separate contracts. It's just that the, the resolution was packaged, like Barry said, together. Okay, I got it. Thanks. That helps. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for Barry on resolution seven? All those in favor of resolution seven, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Are, there, are there any opposed? Any abstentions? Resolution number seven is approved. Resolution number eight. 
Resolution number eight is a request for the board's approval. And I'm going to ask that the board uh, approve these in steps. Uh, first, I would ask that the board approve a capital contract for the construction of the 2022 priority lead service line replacement to Mealy and Mealy and Sons Incorporated in the amount of $3,161,193. Um, the second re request, and I don't know if you want to actually uh, vote on these as I go. Yeah, let's do that, Barry. So, okay. we're, so the uh, we're, we're looking for uh, a motion to approve the contract, the first contract to uh, Mel and Mel, right? Yep. All right. Well, may I have a motion? I moved, Audrey Morrell. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, B.J. Lever. Thank you. Discussion about that particular segment of the resolution. All those in favor of approving the capital contract to Mel and Mel, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, Barry, let's go to the next part of it. And then um, with that approval, we would ask that the board approve a change order of the 2022 priority lead service line replacement project to Mealy Mealy and Sons in the amount of $700,561 for clarification. This is to allow us to utilize the full amount of grant funding that would be available through PenVest. Um, so that's why we're asking for it at this time. All right, may I have a motion on the change order to Mealy Mealy's contract? Motion to approve the change order, Jim Turner. Thank you, is there a second? Second, Mike Domach. Thank you, Mike. Any discussion? Barry, maybe you want to explain why we're why we're having a change order to this project. Okay, so specifically the bids that we had received compared to the original estimate that was made for the project um, came in lower um, than the funding award that PenVest had given us based on the original estimate. So we propose to do the change order to allow us to take full advantage of all available funding, which is uh, over 61% of the grant and the remainder will be a low interest loan as far as how that 700,000 works out. Um, so we're utilizing all available funding. All right, great. So we're gonna use every penny of our grant. Um, all, all in favor of the change order, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, the change order portion is approved. And then one more the leggings, third, right? Just one more for this one. It's uh, a request uh, for the board to approve a professional services agreement for the construction management and construction inspection services to AECOM in the amount of $338,484.72. All right, thank you. May I have a motion for the AECOM portion of this? I moved, Audrey Morrell. Thank you, Audrey. Is there a second? Second, Erica Strasberg. Thanks, Erica. Any discussion? Uh, this is Jim. Uh, just on the uh, entire, all three uh, pieces put together, I'm impressed that we're focusing on uh, daycare installations and homes that have uh, high lead readings already. I think that's a great thing that, that we're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, I want to yeah. second that. <laughs> I, I agree with that sentiment. I'm really pleased that we're focusing on this. It's a really priority for us. Thank you, Erica. Any other comments or questions? All right, may I have a motion on the AECOM part of this contract? We had a motion already. Approved, Craig. Sorry, we had it. I'm sorry. Okay, so all in favor of the AECOM contract portion of this resolution, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, resolution number eight is finally put to rest and approved. All right, resolution number nine. Resolution number nine is a request for the board's approval to award a capital contract for construction of our 2022 urgent uh, lead service line replacement program to independent enterprises in the amount of $1,320,156. Note that this project involves the re private side replacement of lead service lines when an emergency requires the replacement of the public side. 
uh, service line, which is typically performed by PwSA operations. Um, this contract also allows public side replacements when needed due to PwSA's workload and other considerations um, and the adjustment or replacement of inoperable curb stops. Uh, this project will allow um, service line material verification and replacements of lead service line at about 200 locations throughout the city. Staff recommends the board approve. Thank you. May I have a motion? So move. This is BJ Lever. Thank you, BJ. Is there a second? Second, Peg McCormick Baron. Thanks, Peg. Any discussion? All those in favor of resolution number nine, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? And the abstentions. Resolution number nine is approved. Resolution number 10, Barry. Resolution number 10 is a request for the board's approval to award a capital contract for the construction of the 2022 valve replacement project to Independent Enterprises Incorporated in the amount of $919,483. Uh, this contract includes the replacement of broken and aging fire hydrants and small and large diameter valves throughout the uh, PWSA water system boundary. Uh, this contract also includes the necessary related restoration services. Staff asks the board approve this award. Thank you. May I have a motion? Motion to approve, Jim Turner. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, Audrey Morrell. Thank you, Audrey. Any discussion? All those in favor of resolution number 10, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Any abstentions? Resolution number 10 is approved. Resolution number 11, Barry. Resolution 11 is a request for the board's approval to award a professional services agreement under our capital program for construction management and construction inspection services for the 2022 large diameter sewer rehabilitation project to Hatch Associates Consultants Incorporated in the amount of $289,999.99. Note that this project uh, focuses on the rehabilitation of 1,700 linear feet of large diameter sewers those being uh, sizes ranging from 60 inch in diameter circular pipe to 120 inch diameter arch pipe, all located in the West End section of the city of Pittsburgh. Staff recommends this award. Thank you. May I have a motion? Motion, motion to approve, approve Eric Mark Thomas. <laughs> Again, uh, a like second. Yeah. All right, we have a second. All right. It's been. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Uh, Barry, this is Jim. I would have been willing to pay 290,000 on this contract, <laughs> just letting you know. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor of resolution number 11, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? All right, resolution number 11 is approved. Resolution number 12. Resolution number 12 is a request for the board's approval to award a professional services agreement under capital for the design and engineering services for the 2023 small diameter sewer rehabilitation contract number one project to Johnson, Merriam and Thompson incorporated in the amount of $615,198.44. This project will specifically focus on the rehabilitation of over 36,000 linear feet of sewers that range from eight to 30 inches in diameter in the Knoxville neighborhood of the city. Um, this will be through the installation of cured in place piping, um, the liner and uh, associated excavated point repairs uh, to the sewers and structures. Staff recommends the board approve this award. Thank you, may I have a motion? Motion to approve, Jim Turner. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, Peg McCormick Barron. Hey, Peg, sir. Any discussion? Uh, this is Jim. Just a quick comment. Uh, I was impressed with the uh, overall 51% supplier diversity that included pieces for both, uh, for all three women, minority, and veterans groups. So well done. Thank Ms. you. 
This is Audrey. I want to echo Jim's comment on, on this contract. Thank you, Audrey. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor of resolution number 12, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, resolution number 12 is approved. Resolution number 13. Similar to resolution 12, resolution number 13 is a request for the board's approval to award a professional services agreement under capital for the design and engineering services for our 2023 small diameter sewer rehabilitation contract number two project to Gannett Fleming Incorporated in the amount of $625,981. Contract two focuses on the rehabilitation of over 39,000 linear feet of sewers um, in the Homewood uh, neighborhood of the city. Staff recommends that the board approve this award. Thank you, we have a motion. Motion to approve Erica Strasberger. Thank you, Erica. Is there a second? Second, Mark Thomas. Thank you, Mark. Any discussion? All those in favor of resolution number 13, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, resolution number 13 is approved. Resolution number 14, Barry. Resolution 14, typical of resolutions 12 and 13, is a request for the board's approval to award a professional services agreement under capital for the design and engineering services for the 2023 small diameter sewer rehabilitation contract number three project to GPD group in the amount of $745,540.46. Contract three uh, focuses on the rehabilitation of 44,000 linear feet of sewers in the Carrick neighborhood of the city of Pittsburgh. Staff recommends the board approve this award. Thank you, ma'am. Motion. Motion to approve, Jim Turner. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, Audrey Morrell. Thank you, Audrey. Any discussion? Yes, Barry, um, in uh, all four of the resolutions, 11, 12, 13, and 14, I realize we're following the required uh, federal and state uh, policy, but I was struck by the fact in all four cases, we went out for a best and final offer and got no change. Uh, I would just ask that we uh, look at that policy and make sure that we're not missing something because that struck me as odd. Thank you. Understood, thank you. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor of resolution number 14, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? I will be abstaining from resolution number 14 as I have provided consulting services to the GPD group. So I'll be abstaining. These are services unrelated to PWSA. I believe we have the votes to pass resolution number 14. Resolution number 15. Resolution number 15 is a request for the board's approval to award a capital contract for construction of the 2022 catch basin and inlet replacement project to Independent Enterprises Incorporated in the amount of $3,084,491 and a professional services agreement capital for construction management, construction inspection services to Johnson, Merriam and Thompson in the amount of $305,702. Uh, this contract involves the replacement of approximately 400 uh, public catch basins and inlets throughout Pittsburgh. Um, staff recommends that the board approve this award. Thank you. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Mark Thomas. Thank you, Mark. Is there a second? Second, BJ Leber. Thank you, BJ. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor of resolution number 15, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Are there any abstentions? Resolution number 15 is approved. Last one for you today, Barry, number 15. 
Resolution number 16 is a request for the board's approval to enter into an operations and maintenance agreement with the city of Pittsburgh for the Larimer Park car cost share project and authorize the chief executive officer to sign the operation and maintenance agreement on behalf of PWSA. Note that in 2018, PWSA entered into a cost share agreement with the city of Pittsburgh, the housing authority of the city of Pittsburgh and the urban redevelopment authority uh, for the Liberty Green and River Roots project, which we now identify as the Larimer Park cost share. Uh, for the construction of stormwater capital improvements in the Larimer Liberty East neighborhood located in the A41 sewer shed in the city of Pittsburgh. Under this agreement, um, we had committed to $500,000 to fund the construction of the green infrastructure and committed via this cost share, as well as via our uh, Alcasan Grow Grant, uh, to be the responsible party for maintaining the below ground stormwater infrastructure systems installed as part of this project for a minimum period of 20 years. Um, this agreement was developed in cooperation and coordination with the city of Pittsburgh Department of Public Works. And this agreement reflects the language of the original 2018 agreement, but clearly identifies the specific tasks that PWSA will perform as part of this operation and maintenance agreement. Staff recommends that the board approve. All right. Thank you. May I have a motion? Motion to motion approve. approve. Second, Jim Turner. Thank you. Sir, are there any discussions? All right. All those in favor of resolution number 16, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Are there any, are there any opposed? Are there any abstentions? All right, resolution number, I'm sorry, is there a res was there an abstention? Okay. Resolution number 16 is approved. We're gonna move to the new business section from resolution number 17 to resolution number 22, which are all related to our PENVEST funding. So I'm suggesting we take these all together and Ed, you'll explain why. Sure, definitely. Well, before I read them off, yes, these are all uh, PENVAS related resolutions uh, and they're all required by PENVAS in order to close on these uh, funding offers. Um, and for each of them, there's three different loans that I'll read off uh, that are included in these six resolutions. Uh, and essentially the board will be approving the, the funding. So essentially entering into an agreement for these loans and grants. Uh, and then the second component for these three uh, funding offers is a resolution that uh, solidifies to PenVest that we are going to interim fund these costs with our cash as we usually do with PenVest and then submit monthly reimbursements, uh, you know, again, as we typically do with PenVest. So it's really following those same protocols. Um, having said that, I'll go read them off here. So resolution number 17, authorizing the securing of funding by uh, the PWSA from the Pennsylvania Infrastructure Investment Authority in the aggregate maximum principal amount of $4,706,512 for the 2022 Priority Lead Service Line Replacement Program. Resolution number 18, approving the reimbursement resolution for the 2022 Priority Lead Service Line Replacement Program as required by PennVest. Resolution number 19, authorizing the securing of funding by the PWSA from the Pennsylvania Infrastructure Investment Authority in the aggregate maximum principal amount of $23,970,000 for the 2022 phase two and the 2021 small diameter sewer rehabilitation programs. Resolution number 20, approving the reimbursement resolution for the 2022 phase two and the 2021 small diameter sewer rehabilitation programs as required by PenVest. Resolution number 21, authorizing the securing of funding by the PWSA from the, the Pennsylvania Infrastructure Investment Authority in the aggregate maximum principal amount of $36,277,000 for the 2022 and 2023 small diameter sewer rehabilitation projects and the 2020 through 2022 large diameter sewer rehabilitation projects. Resolution number 22, approving the reimbursement resolutions for the 2022 and 2023 small diameter sewer rehabilitation projects and the 2020 through 2022 large diameter sewer rehabilitation projects as required by PenVest. All right, thank you, Ed. 
May I have a motion on, on the block of resolutions from number 17 to number 22? Motion to approve, Audrey Morrell. Thank you, Audrey. Is there a second? Second, Mark Thomas. Mark, any discussion on these resolutions? Hearing none, all those in favor of resolutions number 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, that, uh, uh, those, that block from 17 to 22 is approved. Is there any other business that needs to come before the authority today? Hearing none, may I have a motion for adjournment? Motion to adjourn, Jim Turner. Second. Second, Peg McCormick Baird. Thank you, Peg. Thank you all for your time and your patience and uh, meeting is adjourned. <laughs>